right, guys, out there at Hollow Point Land. Uh, what I'm rinky-dinking with today is I didn't want to give up on this. Um, so, basically, I had Terry Fox send me the external regulator, and I put it on the Zeus 58, okay? Um, and in doing so, of course, it's going to bring the air tube forward just almost to where the threads end. So, with your Donny FL, I mean, you literally got just a little over a sixteenth of an inch clearance where the air tube ends and your threading is. Now, the barrel is a screwed all the way into the breech. So, you've got your, either you got your Donny FL making this thing nine foot tall. Or you get a Neil Clay, which has got the shank on it. You know, a little more of this, this shank. So it's giving you just a fraction more clearance. Um, okay. So either or, it's just uh, with the previous, I guess you'd call it demo uh, regulator, it actually went to the end and I couldn't use a Donnie, so I had to get Neil to make one. So this one seems to be, it's a fraction shorter to make sure I don't hit the ceiling a fraction shorter so the Donnie will fit on this um, of course the regulator is, is from here to here so I don't know give or take five inches and I'll kind of just give you a demo on how I installed it um, and then you got to kind of figure out how to set it up it's a little awkward because with the gauges and the adjuster sticking out, you got to remove the barrel because you can't screw this on without it hitting the barrel. And um, it wasn't that difficult. Uh, again, I'll show you, uh, I'll try to do a close up and show you what I did. But the idea of this regulator, just like on the other regulated guns, is what a 4500 fill. I'm adjusting this nut right here. I don't know. You can see it. I'm adjusting this and counterclockwise increases uh, the amount of air going into this plenum, okay, into this chamber. So I started at about, I think, 2,000 PSI and went up, you know, rotation or two, shot five bullets, went on up. Went up, went up, so I went all the way up to 4,000 PSI. And I'm shooting a 400 grain bullet, because that's the whole point of shooting a lightweight bullet. Um, and getting five to six shots that are all very close together. And what I discovered was about 3,300 is where you start getting your hunting power. Now, granted, you're not going to get 10 shots out of this. If you do, you need to be shooting like a round ball or something, which they don't make, you know, which is just ridiculous in the 58. You bought this gun for power to hunt. You didn't buy it to paper punch all day long. But at about 3,300, now the gauge is tiny, but I'm getting six shots, 768 down to 747. Now, that's not bad for lightweight paper punching. I mean, it's still, it's plenty to kill a deer with. Uh, 3,500, it pushed everything up about another 20 feet a second. So, 791, ending with like 740. And then 4,000, I only got five. But now, you're in the mid-800s. You know, like 859, 840, 841, 827, but remember, you're only putting 4,500 in, and at 4,000, you know, even though you've got a small plenum, at five shots, you're pretty much draining it. So really, it's five to six, you know, average, shooting a 400 grain bullet. Um, I haven't tried the bigger ones yet, but I will. Um, I do have two barrel bands on here just because I'm me, uh, from David at Black Arts Design. Um, the 
fill probe that goes into this. I've got this facing down, <clears throat> and I routed out the end of the stock so I could put this in here. Otherwise, it's going to be sticking out. Um, this fill probe actually is threaded, and you push it in so far, and then you start screwing it in. And it mostly will go by hand. I had to grab a plier at one point and kind of get it in there a little bit. But um, it's not going anywhere. I took out the previous fill nipple because um, it's not needed. And this way I don't make a mistake. Um, and it's a straight through fill nipple. So it's not like you need to replug the hole or anything. It's not a check valve fill nipple. Um, so this gauge, let's see. So the, the original gauge really helps if I have my glasses on. Okay. So the original gauge that's back here is showing you how much air is in your plenum area. The gauge up front, which is on this side, of the regulator is showing you how much air is in this part of the tube. That's what you're filling to, 4,500. And then this part here is what's being shown on the original gauge, which I think mine is somewhere around 35, uh, 35, 36. So <clears throat> that way, you know, this is your working pressure. This is your fill pressure for your source. And, of course, with the booster pump, I can put 45, 4,600 in here and make sure she's jacked up. But it, it is long, and it is heavy. This is definitely a bench rest gun, guys. Um, unless you're Hercules. Uh, so, let's do some shooting, and uh, then we'll do some video on how I put this thing together. I'm going to try to show you this, guys. You know, the camera looks backwards to me. So I took the stock off, okay? And pay attention to this stuff. All right, okay, let me do it. Okay, so I took the stock off. And, okay, this is your block that holds the gun in position in the stock. And when you put your screw into it, uh, your screw is going over here, okay, your stock, the screw that holds the stock to the rifle. So you have a pin right here. Now when you do this, make sure you open your gauge, okay, drain all the air out before you start matching with this, okay. Then what you're going to wind up doing is you're going to unscrew this part, the regular air tube, off the rifle. Okay, super easy. Okay, then because you're gonna this piece screws on, as you can see, it's got gauges and stuff, it's gonna hit the barrel. That's why the barrel has to be removed. The problem is, is this nut only unscrews so far and it hits the shoulder here for the air tank. So this has to come out. This right here is the piece that you get from Terry, okay? Um, but this has to come out. It's not as daunting as you think it is. So you've got a, you've got a pin right here, okay? That pin has to be driven out, a little punch in a mallet. Drive that out. Then you've got a couple of set screws here. You take this off and this block off and you know what take a picture of this with your camera so at least you have an idea on just where it goes exactly and then there's a third set screw under here okay you loosen those three screws up you don't have to take them all the way out just loosen them up and then this piece here you know right here will unscrew and you can slide it out then you can Loosen your barrel nut with a big old monkey wrench. Unscrew your barrel. Pull the barrel out. Then you can unscrew this piece. Screw this piece on. 
and then screw it back in. Okay, once you get it back in, put your pin back in, you know, you tap it back, get your little mallet and your little drop, knack, 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 put it back in. Then you can put, you tighten your two set screws here, the one under here, and then put this back on. Okay, really simple. Now, you tighten these back up. Now this area, here, here, and here, is going to be somewhat loose. You don't, you don't have to get it all the way torqued tight. Because what happens is, is these pieces will screw around, and when you go to put your stock on, they're going to be in the way. So you either have to, you can see there's a small gap right here, okay? You know, I'm pointing to it. There's a small gap right here. It's not all the way tight, because if I had it there, these pieces would be facing in different directions. So, and that's why my sticker is facing down instead of being here on the side. Now, it, it's a little cockeyed, um, but you can rotate this to, you know, your gauges. Problem is, is you want to be able to read your gauges. So, what I did, because your, your pin is right here, um, this wasn't, I don't think, really set for the Zeus. So what I did is I chewed this up a little bit, but I just kind of ground that out with a Dremel tool so I can fit my quick connect over this. I'm not that worried about it because I think later on I'm going to get a different stock from Doug Russell. But, you know, I'm not a wood guy. I guess if I was, I could just round this out here, smooth it down and stain it. But, you know... For me, that's good enough, okay? I never, you know, never said that I was uh, Homer Forms be working with wood. So, now, when you go, you tighten everything back up. You go to fill this up, okay, air will be coming out the barrel. So, it'll be coming through, up, and out. So, you're going to have to, you're going to have to cock it, take the weight off the hammer spring, and you're going to have to open your tank up to be able to pop that valve back into position so it closes. Once you do that, you're good to go. But once you're under air pressure, you won't be able to turn these. They're solid because they're under, you know, 3,000 PSI, 4,000 PSI. <clears throat> so just make sure you have your fill nipple and your gauges where you want this before you put the air in it. Otherwise, you got to drain your air and rotate it a little bit here, a little bit there. He said, what you do with the stock is your business. Um, but this is how I set it up for me to play with. And um, I'm finally getting five quality shots that should be hole touching. And that's what we're trying for with a regulated setup. So, like I said, I'll put the stock back. And just remember, this it's cocked. So, you're going to have to uncock it when you go to slide your stock back on because you don't want to dry fire it accidentally. Um, that's just, you know, these things can happen. Or, yeah, yeah, just safety first, guys. Always safety first. Oh, well, there goes that. Anyways, that's my close-up at the moment. Let's put a few bullets through this beast. We've got her aired up to four, about 4,600. Um, somewhere around 3,600 PSI on the regulator. Okay. When you're indoors, it's nice to be suppressed. Seven ninety one. Seven seventy five. Seven sixty 
But just so you know, I've already went through about 200 bullets. My cost. Okay, that's why I try to tell you guys. I'm not doing sample packs because I've already done the homework and I've already spent my money. Let me piss away my hard-earned dollars so you don't have to. That should be my new slogan. Seven sixty nine. All right, seven thirty nine. Six shots, gentlemen, six of them. Let's see if I can see. About 3,400 PSI. Thirty-three, thirty-four hundred. It looks like so that last shot's drained it down, um, but at forty-five hundred, this is slightly higher. Um, you know, of course, as you drain your your source, it's going to be showing less and less. But still, um, five shots, ten, fifteen feet a second spread betwixt each other is not bad at all. Um, now you see I do have this big Velcro strap holding this down on the back on the lead sled because this will just teeter-totter forward. So if you're using them Gorilla Grips or something like that, you're probably going to have to have it somewhere up here to hold it tight. Like I said, this is now 100% bench rest or propped out a window in a hunting blind. Uh, it is just way too... You know, it's like having the 12 gauge, you know, the 72 cal, Zeus. It's a, it's a beast. Um, and that's probably my next thing. I want to try to put a suppressor, or not a suppressor, a regulator on that to see if we can tighten the group up. But I am taking off the top end. Um, around 4,000, like I said, I'm in the mid 800s. But now I'm going to be down to four quality shots instead of five or six. But again, as a hunter, I don't care. I may wind up doing that, but this is the first success uh, with this regulator that I've had. So I'm really jacked about that. Okay, so after shooting this at the 36, 3700 PSI range, uh, six shots average you know putting all six together dividing by six okay uh the average is 764 feet a second average for the six shots 518 foot pounds so the high side being 555 the low side being 515 at the 4000 ish five shots the average is 834 feet a second, being a 617 foot pound average. So 859 down to 803 for five. So for hunting, maybe jack it up just a fraction. But to be honest, the, the, the mid 700s, 750, 760, 770, 780, those are all, you're above 500. And 15 foot pounds of energy with a 400 grain. So, either way you slice it, you're up there. If you want more shots, you're going to turn it clockwise, more pressure, less shots, counterclockwise. And you're going to go through a lot of bullets and you need a chronograph because 
I'm not even doing, you know, not a full turn, not a half turn. I'm doing a quarter turn. So if the, the Allen wrench is here, I'll just go to here. I'll shoot it five times. Then I'll turn it from here to here. So that would be a full half. So that's what I'm doing. Just, you know, a quarter, quarter, you know, and then go back. So I don't know how many turns from total I started with. Like I said, I... I think it was backed out to like 2,000 when I started. And then I, you know, but it doesn't take much. You move it up a little bit and it, it'll climb. So, um, I don't know if there's other details about this you need to know. Uh, pe I'm sure people will chime in, um, adding their two cents. But this external regulator is the bomb, baby. No more draining my tanks. No more guessing. Um, it, it's awesome. So, again... You'll have to figure out what you want to do with your stock. Uh, but, you know, for me, this is perfect. I care about hunting. I don't care about good looks. If I cared about good looks, I wouldn't be making bullets. I'd be a member of the Hair Club for Men. Um, so, uh, make sure everything's tight because I did notice that, you know, as always with the AEA, the big guns, a lot of your set screws are starting to work their way loose. So, maybe a little that medium Loctite, you know, just to drop on the threads and make sure things don't vibrate. Um, it's another reason why I like two barrel bands. It really keeps that barrel from vibrating and, and maybe unscrewing like it has in the past. So, again, uh, this is a Terry Fox setup. So, Terry, thank you at Fox Air Power. Uh, barrel bands, again, you know, Black Arch Design. I got two different suppressors. I tried the uh, Don EFL and the one from Neil. They're both great. Um, and that is, uh, I think that's it, gentlemen. This is just a quick mechanical how-to. Uh, hopefully, if I can get squeezed in between bullets, I'll try to get out and do a 50, 60 yarder to see how these things are grouping. You know, to see if all the science inside equals to proof outside so um, any questions about this stuff of course you can contact me robert vogel aka mr hollipoy or terry fox at fox air power uh, i think that's it guys i don't have much more to say this is more of a how to and check this out video so thank you for watching and hopefully we can turn this into a tack driver instead of being, you know, those huge spreads in air. Um, so I'm really excited. No more 1,000 PSI on shot one, 500 PSI on shot two, 400 PSI on shot three. Now with this regulator, all the shots are almost identical. So it worked. Thumbs up. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to go do something else now. Thanks for watching.